Why do I have to die? People to identify that you're special. And Jesus says, it'd be better for you to be thrown to the bottom of the sea. Cement block tied around your neck. Did to touch and harm a child of God. Simon, he gets up and says, you man. But on the inside, you're still stuck at a little boy's status. Well, you died long time ago because of the people that were connected to you. So you can see that the God who formed you is still the God who picks you up, who, who wakes you up, who brings you to light. He says, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Jesus goes and go pray and says, Satan wants to have you. He's, Satan's been praying for you. Satan's been asking me if he can take you, if he can have you, if if he could mold you, if he could make you, if, if he could shake you in it. Satan wants to have you from from a little child, he's been had his eye on you, but but you've got to know on today that even though the devil has his eye on you, God, God has his hand on you. And somewhere in reality, you have to resonate with if the hand of God is on me, then then it's him that I will follow only. It's, it's that a stranger, you won't hear the voice because you are the sheep and God is your shepherd. You, you have to know that though I go through the valley, I can't hear you. Of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for God. God is with me. His rod and his staff protect me. He, he prepares the way before me in the presence, my God, of my enemies. My, my cup runs over. That's, that's he prepares the table. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Truly, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You have to identify with what's being said, man. Everybody knows, yes, God prepares the table, but it's in front of your enemies. But ain't nobody sitting in front of enemies. You sitting in front of family and friends who acting like they love you, but in reality, they talking about you. They they can't stand you. They, they sitting at your table because they can get food, but as soon as they done, they run away because they don't want to look at you. You sitting at the table with enemies. But like, listen, like I seen somebody on Instagram. He was like, I'm glad that we don't look like what we've been through. Jesus gets on the cross between the two. And says, Father, forgive them. God, I need to vent to you because people that offend me, I don't want to forgive. But I don't want to see them lost. God, forgive them. God, I need a vent for a minute because sometimes I don't really feel like praying. I just feel like talking to you and telling you really how I feel is that they hurt me and I'm sick of them. Like people just want to use you, want to abuse you. They just want to manipulate you. Can I vent for a minute? Can I vent for a minute that all these texts have something in common? It's that they all envelop in somebody under the attack of the enemy. Can I vent for a minute? David, who writes songs, is under attack of the enemy. Peter, who is asleep in the garden, is under attack of the enemy. The little boy in Mark chapter 8 is under attack by the enemy. And all of them, the enemy wants to throw them in the fire. Just let me vent for a minute. And I tell you on today that when Jesus shows up, he showed up from a high place coming to a low place. You, you better tell people don't look down on you in this season because the way that they look down is the way they may end up going down. Is that you cannot count a person who God has his hand on out. You have to know that I'm bigger than, I'm better than, I'm not supposed to die here. It may look like my demise. I may seem sad. It may seem like I'm down, but you have to look at everything in 360. I'm going to tell you in this season, don't give up on me because God has his hand on me. That thing is going to turn around. It, every time you see me from this point forward, you going to see me walking into something better, into something bigger, into something greater. It's that I'm walking into my destiny. I just had to come to a place where I knew everybody connected to me couldn't help me the way God would help me. It's that the way people hurt you, God says, I'm going to motivate that hurt and I'm going to pull out of there something 
that can pull out of the fire. You've been through the trying. You've been in the testing. You've been in all of the all of the, the rest even on today. You've suffered loss. You've been in struggle. You've known strain, but you've come out of the fire and you're still unchanged. I'm, I'm talking to somebody who's been in a different place where you've been suppressed, you've been broken, you've been abused, you've been misused, you've been handled, you've been doubted, and people gave up on you. God said, I had to put you through the fire so you could come out better, you could come out refined, you could come out stronger through the fire makes you tougher. I had to make you tough with family. So when friends leave you, you're not offended. You're not, you're not shaking. You're not tattered. You're not torn. I had to break you with family. You separated me from them because you heard what they were saying behind my back. You, you heard how they really hated me, how they would denigrate me, how they would insult me in front of your face, show me so that I would be aware of who my real enemy was that my hindrance becomes my weakness is that my heart loves them listen like, like i seen somebody on instagram he was like i'm glad that we don't look like what we've been through and i wouldn't know how to leave unless god you pulled them and so you did